Now, you know, so now you know a brief history of the electrostatic effect. So now, Warrencliffe Tower, like I said in the last ones, it sets up the resonant waves on the Earth, and from what he said, I think it was approximately one horsepower to all points on the Earth. And what the Warrencliffe Tower does, again, it multiplies energy, stores the energy in the top terminal, and pushes the multiplied energy through the Earth. And so, the energy is, you know, you know, taking a small amount of energy, being multiplied in the top and forcing through the Earth. And of course, it's going like the speed of light, or even technically faster. And so you're actually, you know, sending energy out pretty fast once it's turned on. <coughs> and then, uh, let's just see. Uh, energy received by full by other Warrencliffe towers or smaller odd harmonics of the carrier wave, so smaller devices are in. So what I'm just saying is, if it's as big as the Warrencliffe Tower, you're transferring that whole energy amount, but if it's a smaller coils, a smaller um, you know, device like that, then you're having less energy, but still have efficient energy transfer to them because of resonance. <coughs> and um, so yeah, here again, we have the uh, um, Warrencliffe Tower would, would be the demonstration, and then Niagara Falls the um, committee was going to give Tesla like a lot more energy to work with using the Niagara Falls and um, Tesla would have been able to build a larger tower from this and so again the energy would start in the coil in infinity and it slows down um, hits the midpoint of the earth where it stops at the speed of light and then it starts speeding up again and goes to infinity at the other side of the earth and so in this case you're really going faster than light and at portions of the earth you're actually going really fast so it's like really fast slowing down really fast and you know it's through the whole thing and then once it hits the end it bounces off and comes back to the tower to be multiplied again and so yeah the average speed is 471,500 kilometers about and uh... Yeah, again communication energy was faster than light speeds and um... he almost talks about it as like a surface wave it tries to penetrate through the earth but it makes like a type of uh... wave that only stays towards the surface but it's still very deep in the earth so it's almost as if it's doing it and to go you know equally through the earth and it's spread out on the edge of the earth it's really going fast and light to keep in contact with the wave trying to go through straight through the earth and so that's why he gets that um, faster and light conditions <coughs> and then so the hertz light waves travel at the speed of light and Tesla's longitudinal energy waves are greater than light. And so what he's saying here is uh, the velocity uh, of the Tesla energy wave is equal to the speed of light times the cosecant of the degree on the Earth. And so you just Google it, and I put this up, so 300,000 times cosecant of 1 degrees, just write that whole thing in and press search. You have 17,189,606.5. And that's kilometers um, a second. And so it's really, really fast. And so you do now Google the whole equation through the uh, movements through the Earth. So at 10 degrees, and you do the same thing, just change the degree signs on it. And then um, you would get, you know, 1,727,631 uh, 1, And now look at 20 degrees. Look, it's starting to slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. And so now you're getting closer to the equator. See, we're at 50 degrees there. And so again, we're at, yeah, now we're at 60 degrees. See, it's slowing down. And now we're getting close to the speed of light, 80 degrees, 304,627 um, kilometers a second. Now at 90 degrees, look, we're at the speed of light. And then, you know, 90 degrees is the equator or midpoint portion of the Earth. And then once we pass that, it starts, you know, like a mirror image, it starts uh, going faster again towards the, uh, end point of the earth and so so what we have is 170 degrees look it's at it's at the same speed as it was 10 degrees from the um, the tower at the beginning and then once it's 180 degrees it's infinity but you know of course Google can't calculate it or the calculators don't calculate it so they give you a, like uh, a fake value or something like that now the reflection happens at the 180 degrees and returns back to the transmitter. This completes the cycle. So, you know, now you go through the whole thing again. So 180, 190, 200, and then 270 would be the equator again. And then 360 degrees is back at infinity. And that is uh, 
the energy has returned to the tower. And so, uh, I'll go over this in the next one because I'm at 12 minutes. So, we'll start talking about the cosecant wave, the sine wave and such. So, I believe that will be in the next video.